So there's an estimated 1 billion people around the globe that don't have the documents that they need to prove their official identity. And there's a million more that actually have forms of identity that potentially cannot be used. Um, as we move further into this global economy and this global digital economy, it's really important for people to have a digital identity. This not only gives them access to transaction accounts, but everything in the financial sector domain. So from transaction to insurance to GTP payments. Um, and I'm talking specifically about the financial sector, but ID is relevant for a number of other sectors from sort of health um, to education to a number of other things. So when we did the FINDEX, which was in 2017, which is sort of the latest um, FINDEX data that we've done, which is one of the biggest global examples of sort of financial inclusion data, we found that there was 26% of people across the globe that said that they couldn't have a transaction account because they didn't have the relevant ID um, documents to go with it. And according to the UN Sustainable Development Goals, we're working towards 2030 where everybody can get a legal identity. Now, as we have seen with COVID and with um, so many more services being available online specifically, it's more and more important for us now to actually be able to have an online digital identity and something that we can access services online. Um, I also wanted to maybe mention quickly that um, for the financial sector, the three aspects that we think are really important is um, the ID being legal so that it is actually recognized by the government, um, that it is unique and so that you and only you have that identity, and that it is potentially available in a digital format. So this doesn't necessarily have to mean a digital identity with all the biometric data that's supporting it, but identity that can be used sort of online so that I can access, say, my bank account or even get a bank account online. Um, I'm going to caveat this by saying that there are a number of other aspects of, of ID that are important, so accessibility, security, portability, but for the financial sector, these are the three things that we say are primarily important. It's a really interesting question. Um, so year on year, the number of digital payments have increased by about 13%. And this is made even standard setting bodies like the FATF, which is sort of the standard setting body that is responsible for money laundering and countering of financial terrorism, to um, say that digital ID is quite important and that most people should get them. Um, for policymakers, it's quite important, and we did some work under the G20 and the VG initiative about looking at seven very specific policy considerations that policymakers need to think about as they progress into this space. And a number of them were surrounding the regulatory framework, um, as well as looking at things like oversight, looking at things like redress for citizens if they needed to um, you know, go back and have challenges on how their data had been used and stored. Um, and primarily, one of the really important things that governments do need to think about is, um, is about data protection. So it's about how data needs to be protected when it is created, when it's used, and when it's in transit as well. So those are sort of very important things for governments to think about. Now, I definitely think that there's a role for the private sector as well um, in this digital ID framework. And one of the things a lot of countries do complain about is that, is that um, setting up a digital ID framework is very expensive. So actually having the private sector and having public-private partnerships to support on the costs or support on the distribution is a really interesting and a useful way um, to sort of you know, make sure that they both have um, skin in the game, as, as, um, as you say. Um, so one of, one of the really interesting things that has worked in the past is working with mobile money operators. And mobile money operators specifically, they're useful because um, they have uh, network effects and they have a really big distribution network. So having, um, enabling them to actually support and help with this, um, with the digital ID and sort of the rollout of it is really useful. 
other ways the private sector can be involved is by actually layering on top of sort of the legal infrastructure that already exists. Um, and this is the, I mean, there's a requirement for this legal infrastructure to be at least 80, covering at least 80% of the residents or citizens within a country. And then it's useful for um, the private sector to come in and maybe support by doing things such as collaborative um, customer due diligence or creating sort of KYC registries. Um, things that sort of help not just the financial sector themselves, but help individuals and help the governments together. So, so useful for them to work in tandem and sort of roll this out as almost like a common good. So I think this is um, another interesting question and we've been thinking about innovative technologies and uh, emerging technologies and the whole gamut of sort of financial services. So from crowdfunding and payment services to cross-border payments and definitely it's, it's also got a use in identity and sort of identity users. Um, now artificial intelligence particularly has been around for a very long time. Um, you know, we probably know this from imitation games as anyone's watched the movie. And um, but what we do have now that is different is that we have a lot more data and we have a lot more computing power. We've seen quite a few private sector companies that have used sort of very incisive data analytics um, to create an identity profile of individuals. So they usually create these um, these data profiles using social media data, using sort of professional network data, using all the IoT devices that we use, and with a certain level of confidence can produce an identity profile of an individual based on, you know, who they are, where they live, what they do. And this has been used by quite a few different companies to do things such as peer-to-peer -peer lending or um, giving them a credit score. So not to say that this, this doesn't come with its own set of risks and its own set of issues about data protection, but it is something that we're being seen being used over and over in the marketplace. The other emerging technology I probably want to touch quickly upon is blockchain. Now the reason blockchain is um, quite important and potentially useful in this space is because it works on the system that there is an inherent mistrust of people who use the system. But what the system itself does is it allows you to trust it. So blockchain can actually solve the problem of being able to use identities across organizations and across boundaries and borders as well. Um, so there is in, you know, because of the consensus mechanism that's actually built into blockchain, there is sort of an inherent trust in the system itself. And the other reason that it's potentially it's useful is because it can have, um, because there's a stamp of all the transactions that have happened. Um, it's very good if there is sort of a redress mechanism that is needed or there is a necessity to go back and look at how um, the transactions were processed or where it went in the chain. So it, it provides that sort of um, a layer of immutability immutability that is needed and that is very useful for identity systems.